Good morning. It, it's a, always a pleasure for me to come to this conference. I enjoy all of the people here, and I certainly appreciate the effort that Dr. Kavanaugh and Kathy put in to making sure we have a good conference and the work that goes on during the year and the effort they put here. here and I really, I really come, Kevin, because you always take us to test. And it's just a wonderful uh, restaurant, and I'm very grateful. So we're going to talk about the impact and magnitude of problems and of adverse events. And I know we don't like to talk about adverse events and medical errors in medicine, but it's something that happens and something that we're going to spend more time talking to, talking about than we have in the past. You know, there is no such thing. Nobody has ever, I won't say nobody. I'll say there you'll find very few death certificates that will have medical error on them. Well, you know, that's just not, that's not a culture that we have. That's not something we talk about. You'll find very hospital charts even that really talk about medical errors and what we can do. You know, we, dis we discuss them in death conferences and all that, but it doesn't always get trade in the, if you go pick up the patient's chart, it would be hard for us to come. But we've got to change the culture that we have. You'll also hear about the importance of the culture of safety in healthcare settings. We don't talk about that. That's not uh, something we don't talk about in our hospitals, in our clinics, or any place else. Kevin, he mentions he's going to talk about the importance a research integrity, integrity and conflicts of interest and full disclosures. These are things, you know, we often don't report. There is no such thing as a journal for negative results. If everything can't come out negative, you know, nobody knows that. And we go and repeat the same experiment sometimes because we don't know, we don't have, so we don't do that. We're going to talk, we're going to hear about the role and importance of nursing. You know, nobody has to talk about the role of the importance of nursing. There is no such thing as a doctor or a nurse or anybody, patient, who does not know the importance of nursing. We couldn't run the health care center without nurses, and we all know that. And so to talk about the role and importance of nurses, you think, well, that's something everybody knows, but we are going to hear more about the important role they play in some of the things we do and don't do. And of course, we often hear our wonderful surgeons talk about, come and talk to us about medical devices and uh, health care and infections and how we can prevent and change those. So I'm just going to talk about some of the things you already know, but we know that medical errors in hospitals are significant problems. What is a medical error? Well, we all know what medical errors are. There are preventable events which either cause patient harm because at an adverse event or could lead to harm because at a near miss. They're usually preventable. Medical errors may occur anywhere, whether they're in the treatment. You know, if we don't make the right diagnosis, you can't do the right treatment. Whether in surgery, you know, you've heard about patients operating on the wrong on the wrong arm or the wrong foot leg being taken off. That occurs rarely and that's the reason why we hear about it. You know, you it, you don't hear about it. but th that it occurs that occur far more often than we hear about. Errors in diagnosis happens every day. We hopefully have reduced the errors that we make in regard in our pharmacies because very often you know, with the new methods that what, what we get, you know, we used to send concentrated drugs to the nursing station. The nurses would have to figure out how to dilute them and how to, be, but now they send the correct, already measured of most drugs. But many, not every hospital does it, but, but we got a lot of errors related to pharmacy. Doctors too. Doctors order. We calculate and end up calculating the wrong drug. We have equipment failures, and of course, lab report failures. 
Lab reports may be because we didn't see them and look at them in time. You know, sometimes they come back and you just didn't go get them and look at them early enough. So I'm thinking all of these things are things that do and can happen. Medical errors can occur anywhere in the system. In the hospital, in the clinic, the nursing home, dialysis center, pharmacies. Most of us don't think about the many deaths that occur from medical errors. We all, rem all remember that in 1998 and 99, the Institute of Medicine uh, published the book To Err is Human. More than 98,000 deaths per year were recorded for medical errors. Now it's being recorded that that was probably, you know, we, we all, oh, God, impossible. But now they're saying it's more 200 to 400,000 deaths that may occur each year related to medical errors. And using the point estimate data, and that data used based on hospital admissions, about the number of patients that admitted to the hospital e each year, it's estimated that 0.71% of all hospital admissions die. You know, not necessarily errors, but die. The incidence of medical errors is equivalent to a Boeing 747 crashing every day with no survivors. Now, we would all be horrible. A yes at that. But that's what happens. We aren't so aghast because it happens patient by patient, 180,000 to 400,000 times on an individual patient a year. They're expensive. It costs us billion dollars each year in the United States. Medical errors in the United States, there, we have 35,416, 420 admissions to hospitals all over the United States each year based on patient estimates. We've mentioned already 0.71% of all hospital admissions die. 10% of all deaths are associated with some type of adverse event of medical error. In the British Medical Journal in May this year, uh, a Dr. Mark Marquet reported that medical errors was the third leading cause of death in the United States. You know, we all know heart disease and cancer, we know one and two. But number three is medical errors. And followed that by, you know, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, uh, diabetes, other things, accidents. You know, we put all this work in fighting, you know, all the big talk we're fighting, of the legalization of marijuana when it's the most most used, commonly used illicit drugs in the United States, it's never killed anybody. And yet we know that other drug use is rising very rapidly. And so, you know, we sometimes focus our, pay, our efforts on things that we should be doing other things. Let's talk about patient safety for just a minute. The aim is to increase patient safety in, in American hospitals and to get to zero harm. To prevent harm and to have a safe culture, we must have a culture of open reporting. We don't have that. We must have a just culture that involves everybody and is fair and open. And we don't, you know, we don't get anything done. We don't make any difference by just going around blaming somebody that they did something wrong. That does not make the next person do it right. We must have a learning culture, an informed culture. We have to be able to collaborate. The keys to safety is collaboration, 
transparency and consistency that is we have to learn to work together i have to be able to tell you that i what i did i made a mistake and rather than you judge and me we have to work and collaborate and how to not keep repeating the same mistake we've got to be transparent in what we're doing and we've got to be consistent and most of all we've got to be persistent in order to be transparent, we have to have early learning. We've got to teach everybody in the hospital. We've got to start with the people that sweep the floor, the person, that could, the nurse, and, and the aide or the janitor who cleans the floor might be as important or more important than the doctor who's taking care of you and in, in your safety. We have to steal good ideas from each other and share them. We've got to work as partners. And we've got to mentor, be mentored. We've all got to be teachers, and we've all got to be learners. Our safety behaviors have early prevention training. We've got to start training prevention early. And we've got to start early. You know, we have the best sick care system in the world. The problem is we don't have a health care system. We don't work to keep people healthy. If we work to keep people healthy, we wouldn't have as much problem, would have to be doing as much treatment. We, our health behaviors have to be highly reliable. And we have to accept human errors and medical errors. We've got to respond quickly, timely. It has to be standardized. We have to be optimistic. And we've got to focus on safety. And as you think today and as you hear people talk today, I think we, I want you to think about this slide. This is an old Chinese proverb. And it says, if we do not change our direction, we're likely to end up where we're headed. And so I think as you hear each of the speakers, just think of that and think of how it has meaning in what you do and what you have as we go along. Thank you.